because we often use buffers inside of a laboratory situation, it is very important to learn how to make a buffer of a specific pH. So we understand that the buffer region is when the pH is plus or minus one of the pKa. So our buffer doesn't necessarily have to have its pH equal to the pKa of the weak acid. So um, we can make our buffer be anywhere within this pH range of the pKa of our weak acid. So it doesn't have to be exactly at the pKa. We can kind of move it around and this gives us a lot of variability in terms of the pH of the buffer that we make. So with this, what we need to know is um, what we're starting with. So this is an example. There's a few different ways of doing this and there's a few different um, steps that we can, a few different ways of doing this calculation. But in this case, I've told you that I have a 0.5 molar of uh, HCN solution, which is our weak a, uh, acid, and I want to make a buffer with a pH of 8.51. With this, how we're gonna do that is by adding in some of the conjugate base of this weak acid, which is gonna be CN mi minus, but we see that as uh, the solid sodium cyanide, sodium CN minus. And I wanna know how many grams of this conjugate base do I need to add to this solution of our weak acid in order to make the pH of the corresponding buffer to be 8.51. So I need to start with the pKa of our weak acid and uh, we are given the Ka, so I find the pKa, which is the negative log of the Ka. And then I take a second and say, is this pH within the given buffer range? So if this is my pKa, then sodium, um, cyanide and the weak acid HCN will make a good buffer um, in between 8.21 uh, and 10.21 pH. So this pH falls within that range. So what we're going to do is we know what the pKa is and we know what pH we want. The only thing that we have to variate the pH of the buffer is by changing the relative amounts of our conjugate base and our weak acid. So here we know how much um, weak acid we're starting with. So really the question is, and that's, you, you can see it worded up here, how many grams of sodium cyanide, which is a source of CN minus or conjugate base, how many grams of this stuff do we need to add in, it, in order for the pH uh, to equal what we want? So you can see here, the pKa is a constant, the pH is a given, that's what we want. This is really the only variable. And because I've told you how much weak acid I've started with, the only real variable I have is how much of the conjugate base am I adding? So I wanna find out, this is our variable, I wanna find out what this concentration is. So I subtract 9.21 from both sides. So negative 0 0.70 is gonna be equal to the log of my uh, conjugate base weak acid ratio. So I take the inverse log of both sides, I get that 0.2 is equal to my con concentration of my conjugate base divided by the concentration of the weak acid that was given here. So if I solve for the concentration of CN minus, this means to get the pH equal to 8.51, I need to make my concentration of CN minus equal to 0 0.10 molar. So now it becomes a concentration question. So I know what my volume of my solution is, one liter, and I know what I, uh, concentration I need to make um, my uh, CN minus, my conjugate base, it needs to be 0.1 molar. So now I've got to find in how many moles and the corresponding number of grams of our sodium cyanide that we need to add. So I know what concentration we need to make our um, CN minus. It's 0.1 molar. Uh, molarity is equal to moles divided by volume or molarity times volume is equal to moles. So if I want to make a 0.1 molar solution of our conjugate base and I'm doing this in a one liter solution that was given, I need to add 0 0.10 moles of CN minus. So then you need to uh, take a second remember, and this is uh, another common mistake, is that I can't just add CN minus into my solution. There has to be a counter ion. I can't have, just have something negatively charged without something positively charged in there. So I need to add in a salt. And in this case, um, I can uh, uh, use sodium cyanide, but I could have used potassium cyanide and anything like that. And then we realize that because um, the CN minus is detached to sodium, it's gonna be a soluble salt, so it'll disassociate 100%. So for every one mole of sodium cyanide I add, I get one mole of CN minus. Um, if I no need 0.1 mole of CN minus, then I need 0.1 mole of sodium cyanide. So this is the species that I can actually add. So I want the number of moles to be equal to each other, or we know that it is. Um, I know how many moles of sodium cyanide I need now. 
and then I realized that moles times molecular weight gives me grams. I need to know how many grams of sodium cyanide I need to add. I've determined how many moles of sodium cyanide and therefore CN minus the conjugate base. I know how many moles I need, now I need grams. So I have to go and look up the molecular weight of sodium cyanide. So moles times molecular weight gives me grams. I know I need to add 0.1 molar or 0.1 mole of sodium cyanide. The molecular weight of sodium cyanide is 49 grams per mole. So I need to add 4.9 grams of sodium cyanide to my solution to cause uh, the pH to be 8.51.